Welcome to the UK Data Service. This video highlights the most common issues that arise from the outputs researchers request for release from Secure Lab. This video will help you to avoid these common errors, making it far more likely that your output can be released first time. This will save resources for both parties. When you have an output you'd like to have released from Secure Lab, it will need to go through the SDC checking process. So you'll place it in the SDC folder and fill in the online form to let us know it's there. Within this folder, each request should be placed in a subfolder adhering to the standard naming convention. This is the correct naming convention. You can see that it includes the project number and the date in a standard order and format. Sometimes we get subfolders that do not follow this convention. If a project is long running, there can be a large number of outputs in this folder. We must ensure that it's clear which output we're being asked to check. Otherwise, resources are wasted and the release of the output is delayed. Sticking to the convention means that we can always be sure which subfolder is the latest. Please give your file a meaningful name that corresponds with the one you used on the output request form. Please do not use output or something similarly generic. If a reminder is needed, there is a PDF called Instructions for Requesting Outputs. You can find this in the SDC folder. For security reasons, we have to check that there are no embedded documents, invisible content, or hidden text in the document. To check this in Word, go to File, then Info, Check for Issues, Inspect Document, and then click Inspect. We can see here that Embedded Documents has been flagged. When we right click Figure 1, you can see it is still possible to edit the data. This is the Embedded Document and cannot be released. If we right click Figure 2, we can see that it is not possible to edit the data. This is because it has been copied into Word correctly as a fixed image. Charts are the most common cause of embedded documents. If any are found, you must remove them before submission. If we find any, the output will not be released. Some researchers will include figures in the main output document and will also ask for higher resolution versions to be released alongside the main file. This is OK, but we'll need to check all of the files and compare the separate high res versions with those pasted into the main document. If you need to do this, please give your separate high res files exactly the same name as the ones pasted into the main document. This will avoid any ambiguity and requests for clarification that will cause delays. We ask that if you're submitting text files that they are compiled. If they aren't, it can be very difficult to check them, especially tables, which are very difficult to look at as columns shift significantly. This table is small, but if it had more columns and rows, it would be virtually unreadable. You must close your output document before submission, otherwise we'll get a message like this. Being locked for editing means that you could potentially make a change between the first and second SDC check. This would render the first check invalid and the whole process would have to begin again, wasting resources and causing delay. If we find an output is locked for editing, we won't check it until it has been closed. The full citation looks like this. The example here is for the Business Structure Database. Citations can be found in the Study Information file in the Original Data folder in a researcher's project area. You must include the full data citation, including the DOI number. Citing data is important. If data collectors cannot show that these data are being used, then it risks a withdrawal or reduction in funding for that study in the future, which is bad for research. To ensure the threshold of 10 is met, we always ask for the unweighted underlying ends to be supplied. This example shows a histogram and a table, but the requirement for underlying ends applies to every aspect of an output, regressions, scatter plots, everything. It also applies to medians, minima and maxima which can often represent a single observation or less than the threshold of 10. If these are not supplied or do not meet the threshold, the output will not be released. We ask that you submit publishable outputs. The list of acceptable types is here, on our website and in the SecureLab handbook. 
tables must be properly formatted and sufficient explanation on data used, methodology and what each aspect of the output shows must be included. We can't be experts on every data set, field of inquiry or statistical technique that researchers may employ. If we're not 100% sure what we're looking at, then we'll contact the researcher for more information. This will delay the release of the output. We hold a huge number of data sets, so we cannot be sure what every variable name in these data set means. Therefore, you must give all variables in every table, graph, etc. meaningful names that we can understand at a glance. How could we be sure what these variable names mean and fully understand what this table shows? All tables, figures, etc. must be numbered. If they're not, this can make dialogue between output checkers and researchers unclear. The researcher in this example has at least got this right. You should allow five working days for a response about your output. If there are issues with an output, then we'll have to contact you. You will have to make the changes to the output and it will rejoin the back of the queue in our inbox. The five day response time then resets. Chasing the release of an output is not helpful. We will check each output as soon as we are able. While we're talking to you on the phone or emailing you back, we could be working our way through the queue of outputs. As you're aware, you can only access Secure Lab from a UK based institution. We have known researchers to submit their output request from an airport and then head to another country for several months. If that output requires revisions, they cannot be made until the researcher returns to the UK. This will cause a very long delay to the output being released and happens more often than you might expect. We hope this video has been useful. If you take note of the tips covered here, then your outputs are much more likely to be released first time, which is better for everyone. The output request checklist, which is part of the output request form, will help researchers to get it right first time. Researchers should also remember to make use of the Secure Lab user guide, which is in the references drive in Secure Lab.